Welcome to the Phillips Virtual Hymns Learning Zone. I'm delighted to introduce our presentation, Telehealth for Today's Health System, Value Through Platforming. At this time, I will turn it over to our speakers. Thank you very much for the introduction. My name is Christine Storm. I am the head of the patient care and analytics business in Philips. Um, I'm responsible for our acute care solutions where tele-ICU is uh, part of my responsibility. I have the pleasure to also introduce Adam Siever. He's our head of medical affairs for monitoring and analytics and therapeutic care. In addition to that role, he is an EICU physician for SADA Health. Um, he has um, a PhD in engineering and an MBA de degree. And um, in addition to that, he has authored countless publications. So it's my pleasure to actually um, do this presentation together with Adam. Today, I would like to invite you on a journey um, with me, a journey from paper to paperless. Um, there's a positive side to it. So we now have standardization, we have documentation clarity, and we have all the important patient information together. So what have we accomplished in the past? We replaced paper, and if we look into the US, we have almost 100% coverage. But the downside to it, we also pay, paid a price. We see more and more provider burnouts um, coming up, and we have to admit that we are not in advancing the care outcomes. So really the next challenge is how do we achieve sustainability? How do we manage the situation that we have reduced operat operating margins? And um, how do we really transform the care to drive outcomes? So, I really would like to ask you to come um, and join the journey with Adam and myself and to understand on how we can, how our solutions look like to actually um, de de deliver acute care solutions for better care delivery. With that, I would like to hand over to Adam. Thank you very much, uh, Christine. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity uh, to join you on this journey. Um, and uh, through it, we're going to look at our ultimate goal, which is to connect the processes, the places, and the people who make care happen in a, syst in a system that has layers that uh, have uh, perhaps a system of record at the core, and then move out to systems of engagement and systems of insight. Now, as Christine said, uh, when, I, when I started my residency uh, back in the 80s, uh, this is what we uh, dealt with on the left, uh, which is uh, the paper record. And uh, it, there were all sorts of issues trying to uh, get access to these charts. Uh, when patients had long hospitalizations, uh, you might wind up with a, a, a cabinet, a metal cabinet filled with their paper records. So uh, since uh, 2010, we've certainly uh, rapidly moved towards uh, the electronic medical record, and it has had the great advantage of making the data legible and accessible, um, as well as giving limited opportunities for uh, aggregated review. However, if you uh, look at um, what we see in the literature, there's um, significant issues with the EMR. Uh, you see headlines like death by a thousand clicks, where electronic health records went wrong, or risks of EHRs. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, discussion of the various issues that are out there. But if I were to um, you know, focus on the key issues, there's um, uh, the, the highlighting of uh, physician, nurse, and even medical student burnout at 50%. Um, if you look at uh, the EHRs, uh, as this one study on the lower left did, um, uh, the uh, usability of the systems uh, is being given a grade of F. Um, and it does seem to be that uh, the burnout is related uh, to uh, the EHRs because for every 1% increase in the usability, uh, there's a 3% lower odds of physician burnout. So uh, here, here we can see that there's a significant problem. If we were to uh, go to the, the fundamental uh, underlying issues and try and see what the core problems are in a more systematic way, I would say that uh, starting from the left here, the uh, the fact that um, embedded in the EHR are 
almost archaic bedside roles and responsibilities is, is, is a key issue. For example, there's a lot of focus on physician order entry, which sort of frames uh, healthcare as physicians giving orders and the rest of the team being order takers. And that's clearly not uh, the case uh, that we want or even as it is. Um, there are problems with the interface where uh, it's limited to rows and tables and um, maybe uh, uh, text-based uh, documents uh, that don't capture the full uh, richness of, uh, of the data that is available. There's uh, limited integration. And a key thing I'd like to emphasize is the limited integration of the individual patient record with the knowledge that we have about patients in general. And it's that linking of uh, individual patient data and knowledge which really leads to decision making about what to do. And then when we want to go and um, uh, carry things out, there are very few tools for uh, not only decision making, but also for communication and coordination of the mobile team, other than uh, basically what we had with um, the, the paper record. And to a certain extent, the EMR has taken the paper record and put it on the screen, uh, but we haven't really uh, exercised the full capabilities of computing. Um, at the same time, we've had this explosion of data and knowledge, and so um, there's an expectation that for an individual patient, we'll be able to access um, the bulk of knowledge, which is increasing at, uh, uh, at the rate of medical knowledge doubling every 73 days. These sorts of comments are widely uh, out there in the literature. The other uh, issue is that the way uh, the healthcare system has addressed this uh, explosion of knowledge is through essentially siloization. We've created uh, specialties and then subspecialties and then sub subspecialties. We've created a very large team of people uh, surrounding the bedside. Uh, the picture here is only sort of a small uh, fraction of, of the people who would be involved. For every uh, uh, patient in a bed in a hospital, there's an average of 10 people uh, in the hospital who are employed. And these range, of course, from physicians to nurses, uh, to respiratory therapists and other therapists, uh, all sorts of technicians, and then uh, folks like the chaplain and the social worker. And all these uh, folks have to be uh, communicating and coordinating to provide effective and high quality care. Now, if we're going to think about um, using computing um, in a way to uh, support this team, um, and maybe even to reduce its size so it's more efficient and effective, I think we need to really look uh, at deeply at what is the care delivery process and understand how we can help it end to end. And of course, um, we start by collecting data and uh, the picture there on the left uh, suggests an ICU environment where you have monitors making frequent measurements of vital signs. But this uh, data includes laboratory results, uh, images, and of course, all the conversations that uh, a physician or a, a caregiver has with the family and the patient, um, uh, records from the past, all that is the, the knowledge, the data that needs to be uh, brought to bear. And it needs to be organized. It can't be just uh, presented, uh, organized by the where it came from. It has to be, uh, and this is where you start integrating with knowledge by organizing it into uh, a framework. For example, in the ICU, it would be very common to think about the patient in terms of organ systems. Um, after the data is organized, you then move into uh, planning, uh, turning uh, uh, this understanding of what's going on with the patient into what you're going to do and making decisions. And then finally, you have to carry those decisions out, again, uh, with, a, with a large team that needs to communicate and co coordinate um, in a minute to minute, hour to hour basis in some environments. Uh, so communication and optimization of the system uh, can be provided by the uh, computing system, but we need to understand that simply uh, providing uh, great help for collecting and organizing, if there's no help for planning and acting, will probably not give us a good end-to-end -end result. So in doing that, we can think about the EHR as serving pretty much like uh, what in uh, the rest of industry would be called enterprise resource planning systems or ERPs. And they're absolutely essential to run the business. They keep track of uh, all the stuff that happens um, and they do it in a very systematic way uh, where uh, the data is, um, uh, is, is, is kept almost forever and in a very consistent way, uh, but they don't necessarily provide the tools 
to allow people to use that data in a creative um, and um, interactive way. And so, so that's where we start talking about the idea of building a, a layer of systems of engagement uh, for the people who are involved. And it's not, it would include not just uh, the, uh, the healthcare givers uh, and, and workers, but also uh, the consumers and the patients and their families. Uh, and it will need to integrate with all sorts of uh, devices uh, that are constantly evolving that uh, the various users uh, interact with and also allow uh, exchange of data with uh, partners. And then finally, um, uh, on top of all this, uh, you'll need to have a system of insight which will allow you to review the aggregated data and be able to look at a higher level uh, at systems uh, types of decisions uh, that might involve a whole population of patients. Now, the EMR, um, as I said, is, is very much the system of record, it serves as a massive database, and it has enterprise reach, but um, it still has many sources that need to be linked to it, uh, some of which uh, are incompletely linked in many uh, implementations. Uh, it has very limited links uh, to knowledge sources, and it's uh, difficult to extract this information uh, to integrate it uh, for uh, specific bedside decision making but it does become the one source of truth, which is a big advantage. And on top of that, as I said, we'd like to build a system of engagement uh, for acute care that can draw on uh, all sorts of advanced tools and computing technology uh, that go beyond simply the database. And these would include uh, things like artificial intelligence, uh, which I think in many respects is just uh, the limit of computing at this current day and each day uh, what is defined as artificial intelligence changes. Uh, so it's a moving target. Um, another technology that's very important is telepresence, um, the ability to uh, cross the barriers of time and space using uh, audio and video uh, over networks. Uh, a, a third technology that is critically important for, um, for the clinical implementation is a fluent user interface. Um, and uh, I, I think that many of the tools that we're currently using uh, in hospitals and in outpatient areas have an interface that's really quite dated when you think of what could be done and what is being done in other uh, environments. So we need to bring that technology into the system of engagement. Uh, clinicians are fundamentally mobile, uh, particularly in the hospital. So taking advantage of technologies for mobile computing will be important. And then finally, as you see all these different technologies provide uh, different pieces of the puzzle, uh, one needs to have an, uh, a, a system for integrating these various pieces, uh, and we can call that platformization. So that um, is sort of the background of uh, where we've been and uh, where we are in terms of technological capabilities. And at this point, I'd like to turn it back over to Christine, who's uh, going to give you some insight into where we're going. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate. So, yeah, I want to continue with sharing a little bit my thoughts around and, and Philip's point of view on AI. I think AI is a theme that is used in many ways. And to some degree, I guess we can say it's, it's really overhyped these days. AI itself is not powerful. So first it starts with the data accuracy and quality, that's for sure. And then it needs to have a combination with um, deep clinical um, insights and understanding. We as Philips, I think, have a, a track record of this experience that is needed to actually um, leverage um, AI to really um, drive the outcomes. So I think if AI is then used in that way, we can talk about as a way on how it is augmentative, contextual, and um, we can clearly embed that into our solutions. I guess then we can really say, okay, AI can also stand for an amplified intelligent. And with that, it supports Philip's vision to save 3 billion lives by 2030. So here is one example of telecritical care where we have the uh, world largest ICU data bank. This has helped us um, to and still supports us in developing algorithms. So one example, it um, detects patients under centralized care that, for example, um, gives uh, like a direction on which are the patients that need interventions. Or if we look into the space of preventive care, 
um, it has a positive impact on readmission rates. So um, the next slide is really about the different uh, solutions where Philips has already started to um, leverage AI capabilities. I shared with you the one example of telecritical care, but uh, we also leverage AI for our home healthcare solutions, uh, for example, with CareSage, um, but also in the space of diagnostic, um, where Philips is is really um, is a strong part of, of Philips history and, and remains part of our f fundament, um, where we add AI to the diagnostic space. One example here is the IntelliSpace portal. As we, as we said earlier, it's important to have the insights on the unit level, hospital level, or enterprise level. Um, it really depends on the usage. But what I want to show with this picture is how important data visualization is, right? So it's important for caregivers to actually um, get all the relevant information to them in a way that it's easy to access and they can easily act upon. So this is a screenshot of one of our latest um, technologies that we are currently introducing. And um, this was important for me to underline the importance of visualization. So one, one element that is, um, that is also um, an example of um, how we actually leverage the EMR as a two-way audio video um, solution. So that is part of our eCare Manager Tele ICU solution, where we actually um, have a deep integration of audio video that helps um, the caregivers in a centralized location to connect with the bedside, but also for the patients to connect uh, with, the, with their caregivers. I think this is an interesting picture because it shows us that information need to be available in different situations. So what you see in this picture, you see a patient that is being transported from one place to the other, and we have a portable monitoring solution here where we have all the vital signs um, directly uh, visible. Then you have um, a caregiver with that patient that has access to relevant information and knowledge on a mobile phone. And then the third information on this picture is that we have someone um, uh, sitting at a workstation where different information need to be accessible and um, not only the information but also the knowledge and the insights um, that are needed for the different um, people working with our patients here. The core of Philips digitization or digital transformation is the health suite. So it's a highly secured modular set of capabilities. As you see in this picture, and I um, also Adam alluded to it earlier, um, the system of record builds the foundation. It has all the relevant patient information. This is needed and being seen as a foundation that then helps us to actually um, talk about and, and act upon the system of engagement. Uh, where we enable patients and all staff man me members to better manage the care experience and pathways. It has these different building blocks like workflow, intelligence, and user experience that um, are the main drivers for our care pathways and our solutions. So um, we really see that system of engagement as, as the true insight and the true value um, for our solutions at the end of the day. Um, Hospitals of tomorrow all around the world are facing the same challenges. Costs are increasing and we are facing the shortage of clinical expertise. So um, this picture actually told, tells us that um, care teams are not at the point of care. They are not always at the bedside when they are needed. They are distributed. They are all, all over the place if you want. So we need to find a technology that supports 
this um, way that we currently or that supports the way our um, caregiver teams are acting to do today or the way they are forced to act. So um, we are driving towards a technology that seamlessly integrates solutions and with that supports uh, the caregiver team. So really talking about a bedside to website solution um, and um, helps um, to connect care across times, across settings and across people. So if we take the health suite concept that I ex that I explained a little earlier and apply that to our acute care solution, you will find a similar um, picture. So the foundation here is the clinical and operational data, which then feeds our analytics. And the analytics are different from like what is needed on the bedside, what is needed on a unit level or in a virtual care setting. So we know that. Um, analytics need to be meaningful need to be um, need to be uh, adjusted to the needs uh, within the different settings um, on top of it um, part of our acute care solutions is the quality um, to ensure the quality um, by um, our reporting and benchmarking uh, capabilities um, if we bring all that clinical and operational piece to um, information together, we are building um, the foundation for our clinical operation teams to really drive the clinical and operational outcomes. This will then give, and here you see a picture of a care collaboration center um, where we bring exactly all these information together with great visual support um, so that the relevant data, information and knowledge is, 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 is accessible and available um, as needed. So I would like to thank you um, for your attention and um, you'll find more information in a video that we will attach and this video will summarize our acute care vision. Thank you very much.